dollars. The other thing I saw is that uh, next to the White House Communications Office, when we were here on July 4th for Trump's speech, there were uh, there was a single Avenger missile launcher with a generator and a tent. And so that was on July the 5th that we saw that, the 5th and the 6th. And then when we came up today to get to the wharf, um, there are three Avenger missile launchers, two tents, three generators, and a communications, or two S-250 communications shelters sitting on the ground to tie it all together. So they got all kinds of crazy stuff going on around Washington, D.C. In fact, we had three Blackhawks swoop over top of the boat just a little while ago. And then we had a, 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 a Huey, presidential Huey, when we were coming up the Potomac River. He was like 25, 30 feet off the water and just came straight over top of us. In fact, it, he was moving so fast and the blades were hitting so hard, it actually shook the boat when he went over. So do, does this have anything to do with the escalation in Iran or North Korea and South Korea or the Hormuz Strait or any of that shit? I, I don't think that's what I don't think that's what this is. I, I do not think this is, that's what this is. I I, I don't see that. Um, I know that there are escalations going on. I know that there's increases in what's going on with you know uh, our training exercises. I mean, when we came up the East Coast, you know, we went by a variety of different military installations. The security at those installations is increased. The training that is going on is increased. The number of aircraft flying is increasing. And this is really what we're seeing is that during the Obama administration, uh, here, listen, maybe you can hear it. I got a helicopter flying over me right now. <laughs> Is your yacht sitting currently, Lee? If you could tell, tell me. Uh, yeah, currently I am sitting uh, in the Washington Channel at the DC Wharf. I'm probably about a half a mile from the Washington Monument. If you look where the, uh, if you look on the map, I'm at the the Market Pier. Is where we are tonight. So we'll be here tonight tomorrow and tomorrow night and Sunday for uh, head back south. Then we'll be back up here again in downtown D.C. again uh, next week. I've been in D.C. for the last month um, working with people here doing a variety of different things, um, improving the, uh, the vessel and uh, dealing with the kind of stuff that I'm telling you about. So, are you still doing the electric blue solar yacht updates? And uh, do you have uh, subscribers or Patreons visiting the yacht? And are you hanging out? What's going on? Well, let me let me put my headset in so it's a lot easier for me to hear you. One moment, please. No problemo. Um, yeah, we're we're not really we we don't really have that many Patreons anymore. And we're not doing that many updates um, on the yacht. I, I YouTube. Well, first off, I got banned from Twitter. Um, th no warning, n no nothing. Um, they kicked me off Twitter just simply because I said that Muslims were vicious, and that was Twitter's reason for saying that. Uh, that that was a hate crime. Well, you you do realize that there are billions of Muslims, and most of them are not vicious. Well, no, no. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, Hello. we got you. Okay. I got three more of the I got three more of these helicopters flying over me again. Um uh, well, if They're you look us, at lady. uh their I Yes, they are. <laughs> if you look at their ideology and w what they believe, they believe that if you don't believe in Allah, that you are an infidel. And the way that you should be dealt with if you do not convert is to cut your head off. Now, that's written in the Quran. And so I, I, I consider anybody who says that if you don't believe what I believe, I'm going to cut your head off. I consider that a vicious type person. I think that's a vicious attitude. Um, you know, I, I think that yeah, that well, is Lee, not Lee, let's something just, let's, that should be one, condoned or allowed. Lee, even if your interpretation of the Quran is wrong, and I think it might be wrong, but I, I, I do know that there are uh, well, evil sects of Muslims that want to cut uh, everyone's head off. And we know that. I mean, we see in the videos. But in general, the Quran is similar to the Bible where they have a bastardized God that says evil shit all the time. So if you want to call out the Quran, you might as well call out the Bible. But the point that's important here is that. Yes, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't say it. it yeah, the important thing, though, Lee, is you didn't say anything that it, derogatory and it's fucking freedom of speech. And these pricks are, you know, what, whatever you say, whatever you do, they'll just shut you off. And they, and then you have like, there's no way to call anybody. There's, there's no reprisal. There's no, uh, it's like, it's their way or the highway. Right. So, so Twitter cut me off. No warning. Just up and terminated my account. YouTube demonetized me in November of last year and told me that I could be remonetized in 90 days. To this day, I'm still not remonetized. So can't monetize through YouTube. Uh, they wouldn't let me stream live. They took that away from me. And uh, now that I'm here in Washington, D.C., we've tried to stream multiple times. It says that we're streaming live, but you don't see it. It, it, it posts it after uh, after we've already, uh, you know, streamed live like today. You know, things showed up an hour or four hours after we streamed them live. So, you know, it's it's basically just major censorship. They don't want what I've got. Well, they just cut Lee off again. Connection lost there. We're waiting on you, Lee. If we can get you back here, that'd be sweet. Yeah, it's pretty crazy they're cutting. It's pretty crazy that they're cutting me off because I've got full strength on my phone. Yeah. And I'm standing right here. I mean, I've got, I can see it. I've got full strength on the phone. So, yeah, they don't want me talking. They don't want to hear what I've got to say. Now, I know you, things that, that are you meeting they don't or want. are dealing with any of the alphabet groups down there? Are you currently employed? Uh, or are these other people that just don't want you to be saying shit? Yeah, I'm meeting with the alphabets. Uh, I've been meeting with the alphabets for <laughs> 30 years. So um, I can't come to Washington, D.C. without you know, having them seek me out. So, um, I, I've got people coming down, you know, to, uh, we had meetings here today with people from the United States and Canada. We've got people coming in from all over the United States again tomorrow. Um, and, and basically I'm doing research and development of a variety of different things and also, uh, resolving some technical issues, uh, that some agencies have in the area. So when anytime I'm in the area or anytime they've got a problem they can't resolve, my phone rings. So there was an agency the other day that had a problem with one of their surveillance helicopters. So I got called to go look at it. So, I mean, that's the type of thing that, you know, people call me for. So um, today we're on Electric Blue. We've been operating on Electric Blue. We've upgraded Electric Blue. 
we have more arrays on the front. So now we've got six KW of solar array as opposed to four. We upgraded to lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries. So we have 10 KW of lithium ion phosphate on the boat. We're going to add probably another 20 or 30 KW. Um, I just applied for a patent for a surveillance system that I designed. I have, well, actually, in the last week, I've submitted eight patents to the U.S. Patent Office of things that I've invented. So uh, taking care of that while I'm here in Washington, D.C. And then tomorrow we have a planning meeting as to what we're going to do in the future with both Electric Blue and me and research and development and some programs that we're taking forward to the U.S. Army. So uh, ex- can we can you quick explain what the benefit of the lithium phosphate battery is, where you get them and uh, and why you picked them? Well, we chose lithium iron phosphate batteries for several reasons. First off, they're lighter than lead acid batteries. Secondly, uh, a lead acid battery, you can only take about half of the current out of or half the power out. So you can only really go to like 50% depth of discharge with a. I apologize. We lost Lee real quick here. He'll be back. Lee, I know you when you got me back. Okay, you're back. Yeah, hello, my friend. Yes, yeah, sir, I am here. Okay, so I don't, I don't know where I fell off. But anyway, um, a lithium iron phosphate battery can be cycled literally thousands and thousands of times, whereas that a lead acid battery can only be cycled maybe 300 times, um, you know, to a 50% depth of discharge where lithium iron phosphates can be um, – you know, discharge to 80% depth of discharge with no degradation to the cell. So there's lots of advantages to the lithium iron phosphates. Now, we chose lithium iron phosphates as opposed to just a lithium battery or something of that nature. I mean, we didn't want a battery like what's in a Tesla because we don't want the fires like they have in Tesla. Boom. And and the advantage of the battery in a Tesla is that, yeah, the the... Yeah, exactly. The battery that is in a Tesla has a greater, a slightly greater energy density. But the problem is the volatility of the battery is much, much worse. So you've got a really, really good chance of having a fire. And the way that Tesla went about designing their battery pack, I, I would have never done or used or allowed. It's not a, uh, a, a good way to do it. But that's what Elon Musk wanted to do, and so that's why we have all the Tesla fires. And and we knew that Tesla was going to have fires in his cars before he ever built the first one because of the volatility of that type of battery. So a lithium iron phosphate is a much, much safer, uh, much better battery and will give us a lot better performance. It doesn't um, – when a lead-acid battery, as you – continue to pull more power out of the battery, the battery d- it drops its voltage while you're increasing the load. Uh, a lithium battery doesn't drop so much. It pretty much just pours the voltage out and has very little difference in its operating voltage when you're applying the load to it. So they're not as variable. They're a lot more stable. It's a, a lot easier and better to get the power out of them. So that's why we chose a, a lithium iron phosphate technology um, or chemistry. And, and you can get those. There are a variety of different manufacturers that manufacture uh, lithium iron phosphates. And, and they use them a lot in electric vehicles because they're so much safer. Um, they're not nearly as expensive. And they're a lot more reliable uh, than the, like a lead acid. And, and again, they're, they're much lighter as well. So there's lots and lots of advantages, lithium iron phosphate. Sounds like a no-brainer. Now, here's a, a little tip I want to give you. I think that the the, the audience that uh, is really, they're missing Lee Wheelbarger. And you can still get Patreons over at your Patreon page, Lee. And uh, you can still post videos. They don't have to be up on YouTube. Just make your own personal videos and put them up there. 
and we just lost the connection again. I hope you're still listening. Um, it's been great to catch up with you. Lee Wilbarger is an electric blue solar yacht in Washington, D.C., doing what Lee does. Um, he's upgraded the the uh, the trimaran. He's got new lithium ion phosphate batteries that, that are less likely to explode. And uh, we would really I like to hear some updates from you. So you got any closing words? Well, uh, you're welcome to call any time. Let me know when you want to chat. Um, I, it's We've been really, really super busy, and it's a lithium iron phosphate, oh. not iron. Oh, iron, see. like as in it'll pumping iron or uh, iron rail. Um, you know, yeah, we're, but, gonna, we're again, ordering some Edison you know, we're open to, to talk to you or, or. Is that similar? Yeah, they I, I don't I, I haven't tested that battery. Um, I, I can't say that that's as good as the lithium iron phosphate. Um, the, the Edison's, it depends upon whose you get. Uh, and you know, so on and so forth. So I would have to look at that before I could give you a, yeah, yeah. And uh, well, but it's the cycle life, mm. you know, it's how long is that battery going to last me? You know, if it's a lead acid battery, Hey, you might get five or 10 years out of it. But if it's a lithium battery, you could get 20 to 30 years out of it. So you've got to look at it over the long run as to what's going to be cheaper in the long run. Um, as well, opposed well, to, they, yeah, well, these claim, are half price of those. They claim uh, 45 years at max potential and up to 100 years if you keep it nice. And you can replace the electrolyte quite easily on these batteries. They're very expensive, though, Lee. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you might be better off with the uh, lithium iron phosphate. I, I, I have to, the, and, and look, I, I don't, I don't want to talk bad about their battery because I haven't tested enough of them to, to, to have a negative uh, response to them. All I can say is that in the comparisons that I did between all of the batteries that are manufactured uh, worldwide and all the different chemistries, I found for my applications for you know, operating a 100% solar-powered boat, uh, as well as grid storage systems that we're doing for microgrids, I found the most cost-effective and dependable solution was a lithium-iron phosphate. So that's what we chose on the boat. So that's, you know, and as far as, you know, doing shows, I don't know if I can do like a, I mean, we do have a Patreon page, but we haven't uh, really done anything with it because, you know, we've traveled now 1,600 miles on the boat. We've done major renovations. You wouldn't believe it. It's, you know, unbelievable the renovations that we've done and the modifications. Um, and we've been putting in, you know, 10, 12, 14 hour days to try to get all this done. My wife. Lee, you cut out again. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and I'm sure you're about to come back. Uh, we will be calling you regularly because people want to know where Lee Wilbarger is, I'm sure. So we're going to be doing regular updates on the electric blue solar yacht and what you're up to, you and your wife, and uh, you're back. So we're, we're about to go because I need to get uh, on with Matt Powers right now. But it's been a pleasure talking to you, Lee. If you want to see Lee, go check out his Patreon, comment below this channel, and we'll be calling Lee pretty regularly because he'll pick up and we can do an interview. Look, look, look forward to it. You take care of my friend. I appreciate everything you're doing and uh, keeping everybody up to date on what's going on in the grand solar minimum. The crazy part about, you know, all of the shows and everything I did is 